Hello, everyone. I pressed the wrong button there. I had the countdown start again. <laughs> uh, hello and welcome. It's Monday Night Live here. I am Julia and I'm the owner of the Paper and Ink Boutique. I am at home in my craft studio here and we're ready to start Monday Night Live. So welcome, everyone. Welcome. Hello. Hello, everyone. Uh, so tonight it's all about the Lindy. The Lindy's Magicals. Have you heard of these? Do you have these? We've been selling a lot of them. They're not a, a new product, um, but I'm having fun with them. And uh, so let's get started. I'm going to switch to my overhead camera and then we will just jump right in because I got a lot of techniques to show you. Okay, there we go. So many techniques. Okay, so I have just two of the Lindy's Magicals. I've got Steampunk Soiree and Northern Lights. Now, if you're not familiar with what these are, let me just open these up. So this is what one of the little um, jars look like. This one is called Top Hat Teal. And these are a pigment powder. So you can see that's just a powder in there. Okay. I'm just going to close that one up because I'm notorious for not putting lids on things and spilling them. Okay. And I got some on here, so I need to wipe that up before I make a mess. Okay. So I am going to show you quite a few techniques. Now, these are just some things that I, I worked on earlier today. Uh, some easy techniques some backgrounds. I use some crackle paste, uh, stenciling because you know I have to use stencils. And so we will get on and I will show you how I created all of these. First of all, easy, fast techniques to use your Lindy's Magical. So I've got, uh, I have got some watercolor paper here. Oh, and I just realized I didn't cut some more foundations paper. Give me a second. I do have some black foundations paper that I will be using too. Okay, I'm coming. You know, I was home all day in um, retailer classes. You think I could have gotten myself better organized, but... So I will have some white foundations paper as well as some black foundations paper. Uh, and these are heavyweight papers. But I've also got some watercolor paper that I'm going to be using as well. Hello, everyone. Hello. Joining from Lloyd Minster. Well, hello from Lloyd Minster. Sorry, it doesn't give me your name. It just says Facebook user. Okay, let me just cut this into six by six pieces. So I've got that to go with. People say, what do you do with those six by six when you're done? Um, I'll usually cut them down into card friends. I just do it on six by six just because they show well on camera. Okay, there we are. Now I'm ready to start. Okay, let's get going. So some easy, easy techniques. So out doesn't have to be watercolor paper. No, it does not have to be. It does not have to be watercolor paper. Just a heavyweight paper for most of the techniques um, that I'm showing you. I'm just using watercolor paper because I, I had it here. And it's just a heavy weight. Okay, so off camera, you can't see it, but off camera here, I have some clean water and I've also got one of these. So I'm going to be cleaning my brush off and then dipping it back in the clean water. Okay, so I've got just this heavy weight paper. And I'm just going to wet it down. So just some clean water all across the back of that watercolor paper. Now I'm going to take, I'm actually going to dump these out. Let's do this one. This is Apothecary. This one is part of the Steampunk Soiree. So I'm going to open that up. I am going to take, no, I don't want that. I'm going to take a brush. This is a dry brush. 
and I'm just going to pick up some of the pigment out of the jar and all I'm going to do is I'm going to tap it on that paper that has been covered in water. Now you can do this as much or as little as you want. There you go. So you can see the water. Oh, maybe you can't see that. Why is my thing so? Oh, there we are. I am using watercolor paper, and I think it's the Ranger watercolor paper. Um, where are we here? Ah, oh, here we go. Okay. Uh, so you can see it's already starting to activate. It's already starting to activate. But I'm going to add a little bit more water. So this is very similar to um, Color Sparks, um, that sort of thing. So I can leave that like that. Just let it kind of do its thing, react with that water, and all of those pigments are just going to let loose. Okay? So easy way to do that. Got to get a piece of paper towel. So you can see how easy that was. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. And now I've got this background. And that I did the same as this one here. Only I think I added more water to that one this morning. But exact same. Now, if I wanted to, like I could let this dry and be happy with it and do anything with it. Now, if you want, you can, I'm not going to use that. I'm going to come in with my wet brush i am going to take some of the moisture off of it but i could come in and just sweep across that paper and look how beautiful that is it just is gorgeous stunning i love it it's still super wet Let's give it a dry It's not completely dry, but it's getting there. But look how gorgeous that is. Just as a beautiful background. I absolutely love it. It's gorgeous. I'm going to turn that light around. It seems too bright. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. Love that. Okay, so that's technique number one. Easy peasy, right? So easy. Okay, so that was wetting the paper and then sprinkling on the magicals. I lost my wet cloth here. There we go. I'm just going to clean that up because those little pigments get everywhere. So that one was very similar to this one I did this morning. There you go. Very similar. So I'm going to set those aside. Now, another way you can do it. Uh, let me bring in that one here. I believe that was this one. And what I did, um, grab another piece of paper. Uh, here we go. Still using the watercolor paper. Is I could take, I'm going to open that one and... I want to do a second one. Which other one do I want to do? Maybe this one. So this one is out of the same set. Apothecary Azure. So I'm going to open up both of those. And I'm going to take my brush again. I'm going to dip it in. Now this is dry. This paper is now dry. So I'm going to just come and just tap on some of that color. Now I don't like this big splotch of color, so I'm actually gonna come in and I'm actually gonna brush that kind of out. Just kind of brush it out because it's kind of a big blob there. Okay, I'm gonna come in with my second color, which is the Azure, and I'm going to come in and I'm going to drop some of that on. 
So all I basically got, I've got dry paper and I've got dry pigments. Just going to close these out. Oh my gosh, there we are, I'm struggling today. And now I'm going to take my water and now I'm going to add water to it. Oh, that's a great color combo. I like that. Okay. Oh, I love that. Okay. So this one I did earlier, I did brush it after, but I'm actually liking what I'm seeing here. So I think I'm just going to dry it. Just need a piece of, just going to kind of tip off some of that extra moisture before I dry it. Okay, it's not completely dry, but I am going to leave it like that. I'll leave it set aside to dry, but look at how gorgeous that is. So that was starting with dry mixed media paper, in this case, watercolor paper, dropping the dry pigment on it and then adding water and just letting the water do the work. Isn't that gorgeous? No, it does not have to be watercolor paper. I just happen to have it and I'm like, oh yeah, that'll be perfect but I, I will be using some foundations paper in just a minute. But, oh my gosh, look at that. I am loving that. I did the same technique on this one, but it, I don't know, I didn't like it. So I ended up brushing this one, but I don't know if you can see, but there's like some fantastic gold pigment in here. Like it's just stunning. It's gorgeous. Okay. So there's two super easy fast techniques. Oh my gosh, so fast. You can't even believe it. Okay, I'm going to set those aside. Let me set this aside. Let me wipe up my surface here. Perfect. Okay, so now these next ones, this one here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is we're going to watercolor with them. Yep, you can totally watercolor with these. Just going to move in this palette here now yes this is for square um the mini square ink pads i realize that but i like using these for little mini palettes they just work well for me okay so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to take my palette knife and i'm just going to put a little bit of pigment on there let's pick this one is yesteryear yellow uh let's pick this one is called Bandolier Brown. Just a little bit of that. And what else do I want to do? Maybe this one. This one is Petticoat Plum. And the set I'm working with right now is Steampunk Soiree. That's the one I'm working with right now. I'm going to add a little bit of water to each of these little puddles here. Wonderful. I've got my brush and let me grab another piece of paper. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to come in. I'm just going to mix up those pigments in that water. I'm not using a whole lot. And now I'm going to just come in and just add it to my paper. Beautiful. I'm going to clean off my brush, dip it back in my clean water. Let's go to our next one here. Bandolier Brown. There we go. Gonna clean that brush off. Stick it back in the clean water. And let's do this one here.
No, you absolutely do not need much. You do not need very much at all. Okay, I'm cleaning off my brush. I'm going to stick it back in the water. And I'm just going to come in and I'm just going to try and just kind of blend those colors a little bit. So again, cleaning off my brush, dipping it in the clear water. And I'm just kind of going over those areas and just trying to get a better blend. But look how beautiful that is. That is gorgeous. I love that. So again, you have to remember that this is wet. So it is going to lighten up um, when it dries. not quite dry but it's getting there I'm just going to just tap off that edge where I've got quite a bit of water pooling there but look at that just some really great blends you can get just by painting them on they do have a sparkle to them and yes they're not just pigments they do have a sparkle yes they do and I do have a sample here um, that I will show you that will um, show you the sparkle. Okay, I'm just going to clean this up. Just give me a second. Clean up my mess because if you've ever worked with pigments, you know those things get everywhere. But I really love, I really love these uh, silicone. I know they're ink pad holders, but man, I love them for little palettes. Okay. So now these next two, um, I will show you the one that shows the sparkle I'm getting there. Okay. So these two, um, in one of the retailer classes I did today, there was a technique that was done. I thought I'm going to show that tonight. And it was from the crafters workshop. And I thought it was a really cool technique. So it was timely that I took that class today. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some pearl white stencil butter. Now I'm using white, but I am in a little bit. I am going to use some colored stencil butter, but let me show you what I'm going to do with this. I'm going to take my palette knife. I'm going to take out some of the stencil butter and I'm just going to put it on my work surface. Okay. So let me do that first. Let's cover this up. Okay, so now I'm, let me, let me just stick with this one for right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick my, oops, you're going to have to hang on because I stuck a dirty brush in my clean water. Now my clean water is purple. Hang on, talk amongst yourselves. I'll be right back with some clean water. And I'm back. Did you miss me? Could I have picked up my leftover ink by dabbing paper into it? Yes, you can. Yes, you can absolutely do that. I just decided not to. Just for the sake of time. Okay, so now I've got a brush. This is my brush that I'm going to stick into my, my water my clean water. And now I'm going to stick it into my pearl stencil butter. So now I'm making kind of a stencil butter wash, I guess. I'm going to take it and I am going to wash it across my paper. Okay, so again, stencil butter, clean water, and I'm brushing it across the back of my paper. Now I'm going to take some of the Petticoat Plum. Nope, I want to use this. I'm going to drop it. That's probably too much. I didn't mean to do that much. Okay, and now I'm going to drop it into that wet 
stencil butter. Okay, so I'm going to go back into my water. I'm going to pick up a little bit more of the stencil butter. And now I'm just going to wash it across that stencil butter. So that is a pearl stencil butter. So what it's going to do is it's now going to tint my Lindy's pearl. So gorgeous. Okay, so I do want a little bit more of the pearl on top and I can keep layering this. Again, let's get some water and add more pearl on top. And look at that. Oh my gosh, it's so, it doesn't even show well on camera. I mean, it's just, it's just this great pearl finish. And I love it so much. I just noticed there was still some pearl left on my brush. So I thought I'm going to come in here and clean that up. Look how beautiful that is. And that's not even dry yet. Once it dries, it's going to look absolutely stunning. Okay, let me clean this up a little bit. Clean up my brush. Okay. So these two I also did with the pearl stencil butter. Now this one I used a blue and I don't remember which one I used, but I, I used the blue and I just kind of did it down one side. And then I took my brush and kind of drug it through the pearl stencil butter. And it almost came out looking like streamers. I don't know. Once I did it, I was like, oh, that's actually really cool. So that was just kind of a happy accident. And I didn't want to over mix it. I thought, oh, I love it. It looks really cool. There we go. Okay, now this one as well. Now this one, I uh, actually what I did is after I put this pearl stencil butter on is I took my brush completely clean water and brushed it over top of my uh, pearl stencil butter and then drop the pigment on and just kind of let the pigment do its thing. So all three of these are using the pearl stencil butter. All three of these. And just look how gorgeous that is. I mean, it's just amazing. Absolutely stunning. Love it. Okay. So I'm going to set these aside. Okay. Now the next one I wanted to show you. Um, I, you know, I love making backgrounds. Where did my other one go? Oh, here it is. So what I did with this one, I took a six by six piece of foundations paper, six by six sheet of foundations paper. This is a, um, a sentiment set that I got. And what I did is I cut them out of this and I absolutely love this. Love it. It's so different. I just can't help myself. I just giggled when I saw this. I was like, oh my gosh, I love it. I love it so much. So how did I create this background? Okay. I took translucent texture paste. Translucent texture paste from Ranger. I took that one. Now this one, uh, let me put this Lindy's, let me put Steampunk Soiree away for right now and I'm going to get this one up this is northern lights we just got this one in I think on Friday and this one I love the names of them polite people purple uh Canadian bacon blush which is a weird name it, it really is a weird name uh emerald a eh? that one's fun maple syrup bronze and hockey puck black so that's in the Northern Lights one. Okay, so I took a six by six sheet because I'm thinking I'm just going to make a really great background and I can use it for die cutting. I can use it for sentiments. I can use it for whatever. So I took the translucent texture paste from Distress 
and I opened it up. I took some out, put it on my work surface here. There we go. Let's close that puppy up. Wipe off my wipe off my stencil. Okay, there we go. Um, let's use Polite People Purple. This one that I used here, this one, that was Emerald A. So you can see that it's got a lot of different colors in it. You can see that's very cool. Okay, so I'm going to take Magic, or sorry, Polite People Purple. And if you look at it, that does not look purple. So I'm just going to dip my dry brush in it, pick up some pigment, and just drop it on there. Going to take my palette knife. I'm going to mix that in. You can see, look at that. Just like magic, it starts turning purple. Okay, now I'm not going to over mix it because I want to keep some of that gradient color in there. Okay, so I'm going to pick this up. And I'm just going to start covering my piece of paper. Now you can cover it as thick or as thin or as whatever you want. Like I said, I just use these to make die cuts out of die cut shapes, die cut sentiments. So I'm just going and picking this up and just spreading it across that piece of paper. Now, if you know me, you know that I, I like to make backgrounds. That way, when I need a card or I need to die cut a sentiment or I need to die cut a shape, I can just look at these backgrounds and go, oh, that color is perfect. Or I love what's happening there. Yeah, I'm going to die cut a sentiment out of that piece of paper. Okay. So I'm also trying not to over mix this because I don't want to mix in those colors too much. All right, so let me wipe this off. And then I'm going to show you this. Now, again, you have to be aware that this is not dry yet. Okay, so there we go. That is the Distress Paste Translucent. And it does dry. Let me bring this one in. You can see the shine, the translucence of that. I mean, it's just fantastic. And like I did, I just cut out some sentiments and I thought those are amazing. I love it because, you know, I mean, just look at the color of that. It's just, it's just so cool. It's just amazing. So again, mixing it with some of your texture paste is another way of using your Lindy's Magicals. Okay, I'm going to set that aside. Okay, now while we're talking about pace, let me skip ahead. I actually missed doing one, but we're going to skip ahead and then I'll come back to my last one here. Okay, so I did make these up earlier. Now these two, okay, these two here, this is the Vicki Booten's Black Foundations paper. That is the Vicki Booten's Black Foundations paper. And this is the white foundations paper, the white foundation paper. Now, how did I do that? Look, look at the crackle. Isn't that amazing? Oh my gosh. I did both of these and then I turned around, I set them aside. I did an online class. And then when I came back, I did kind of squeal a little because I love this so much. Okay. So how did I do this? I have to make sure I'm not going to set it in anything um, wet back there. Yes, they look very different. Okay, so how did I do that? I use the uh, translucent crackle paste from Ranger. Did do that. And again, did it the exact same way. Let me just grab some foundations paper. Let's do the black one. I probably won't be able to show you because I do... I generally, these ones you need to let dry on their own. The Stamperia one, you can take your heat tool to and it'll still crack. These ones, not so much. But we're going to do it the exact same way. 
So you take your crackle paste, you take out some of your, your uh, medium here. And I did on both of these, let me come back here. So this one was from the other Lindy's. Uh, that one was the azure and this one was the teal were the colors I used on these ones. But look, look at how gorgeous those are. I was so tickled when I saw these. I was like, oh my gosh, these are amazing. I'm absolutely in love. So yeah, these turned out better than I thought. And that is using the same stencil. All right. So let me... Got my crackle paste here. Uh, let's use something that's going to show up. Let's use yesteryear yellow. Hopefully that shows up on the black. Um, again, I'm taking a dry brush. Just going to drop some of that pigment on there. Now we're going to mix. There we go. I'm going to bring my stencil in. Do you know what this kind of looks like? It kind of looks like Dijon mustard. It looks like a grainy mustard. <laughs> it's when, I, when I first looked at it, I'm like, oh, it kind of looks like mustard. Okay, I'm just going to grab out a little bit more. There we go. It is a fun, a fun um, product. It's very much like, um, like the um, Color Sparks. Um, I've never used brush shows, but I think they're sort of like brush shows as well. Okay, and there we go there. Now, this is a translucent uh, paste, so right now it does look very white, so it will need time to dry before you get the full effect of what it's going to look like, but that is what that looks like there. Okay, I'm just going to set that aside. And when I'm done, because these will take a little while to dry, is once they're dry, I'll take photos and I'll post them. I'm just going to wipe off this stencil because I do not want to let that crackle paste dry on there. That would be bad. So I'm just going to take just a moment just to clean that off just to save myself a lot of grief later on. And there we go. Stencil is good to go. Okay, so like I said, let me bring back these. So these were done um, exactly the same way. That was using the same Distress Translucent Texture Paste. And I just let it dry on its own. And you can just see the gorgeous crackle that I got in there. Like, it's just stunning. Just absolutely stunning. Okay. Now, there is another way of using the texture paste. And I'm going to bring this one in. So this one was using the Stamperia Crackle Paste White. So I did this one. This is one of our new stencils from Stencil Girl. And it's called um, I Am Words. Love it. 
Okay, so I did this one. I put the crackle paste through the stencil and then I just let it dry on its own. Um, and then I came back. So I am going to show you this one. I did this at the same time. So this again is the Stamperia crackle paste white. I put it through the stencil and this is called heart in hand. This is a new stencil that we received in from stencil girl. And now I haven't done anything with it, but you can see it's all cracked. It's all completely dry. And now what I'm going to do is show you another way of using of using your Lindy's. Uh, you can put them in a mini mister or a little mister bottle. The little mini misters or uh, water bottles, spray bottles from uh, Paper Artsy would also be good for this because they're nice and small. But I had mini misters, so that's what I used. So what I did is I took my palette knife, I scooped out some of the pigment and dropped it in my mini mister and then filled it with water, gave it a good shake. And now I've got Lindy's um, magical sprays. Yeah. So I'm just going to shake these up because they do separate a little bit. Okay. So I've got this has got crackle paste on it. I'm just going to try and straighten it out, flatten it a bit. And now I'm going to use my sprays on it. How gorgeous is that? Love it. Just going to use some paper towel just to kind of get some of that excess off. But look at how gorgeous that is. Oh, I can go in and I could add more. Now these were, uh, give me a second here, uh, maple syrup bronze is one of the sprays. So that's the maple syrup bronze there. And then the blue I used was, oh, here it is, the azure. So those are the two colors I used. This one is from Steampunk Soiree and this one is from Northern Lights. But just look how gorgeous that turned out. It's not even all dry yet. Now, the other one, because I did have a third one here. I'm actually just going to dry this a bit more. This one was the Hockey Puck Black. And what I use this one for mostly was doing splatters. look how gorgeous that is oh my word stunning love it okay so that's another way is you can make your own sprays with them let me do a bit of tidy okay 
So I'm going to bring this one in here. Oh, yeah, here we are. So this is the Black Foundations paper, the Vicki Boonton's Black Foundations paper. And all I did on this one was I just sprayed it with the bronze, where's it here? Maple syrup bronze. Why am I out of focus? What's happening here? So what all I did on here was I just sprayed it with the maple bacon bronze, maple syrup bronze. Why? I don't know why I'm saying bacon. Yeah, it is amazing. So I would probably use this for die cutting. It would also look really great as a background, but it's very cool. Very cool. I don't know why I'm out of focus. Okay. Now this one, this, I almost got a completed card out of it. I'm just going to see if it will focus again. I don't know why it's out of focus. There we are. So this is a card that I made. There you go. And I use, that's actually just white paper. And I'm going to grab. There we go. So this is the watercolor paper. And all I did was I took my two sprays on the back and I just randomly sprayed watch where you're spraying Julia don't spray on your face which is I emptied that one I did a lot of spraying today and that's all I did on that background was I just sprayed it that's all I did. So easy. Just going to try and clean that edge up a little bit. Now, somebody was asking me, could I just dip in here? Yep, yeah, I absolutely could. Let me grab another piece of paper that I just happen to have here. Now, I'm going to add just a little bit of water and I will dunk my paper in there. Blue and brown, probably not the best colors to do this with, but yes, you can do that. You totally can. These are amazing. They really are. I am loving them. Okay, so those were sprays. Those were sprays. Here we are. This was a spray. Look at that. Oh my gosh, I'm loving this. Not sure what I'm going to do with it, but I love it. Um, here's this one. Looks like grainy mustard. Has not started to crack yet. It's going to need a little while before it's it'll be where it'll look like it's um, when it's finished. But when this one's done and it's completely dry and all cracked, I'll post photos of that one. And remember, this one is using the Distress Crackle Paste, Texture Paste, sorry, Translucent Texture Paste, and just spreading it over, the, or mixing it with one of the pigments and then spreading it over the background. And that's what I did with this one here. And it's not even close to being dry. Ooh. It is still wet. So there you go. Again, will make great for cutting out die cuts of words, sentiments. More of the crackle ones. Don't be afraid of mixing pigments with your crackle or your texture paste because you never know. This one I absolutely love. Love it. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. It's probably going to end up being a card, but it is amazing and I absolutely love it. Gorgeous. Love it all. Or you can use it to just paint. Paint on the back. Spray with water. Drop them on. Drop your pigments on. Let the water do the work for you. Or uh, put your pigments on. Spray it with water and let it do that way. But again, these are great backgrounds. All I need to do, these are ready to be made into cards. Fast, easy backgrounds. Very cool. Very different. And I absolutely love them.
Okay, so there are just a few ways that you can use. Let me go back up to my front camera. So those are just a few ways you can use the Lindy's Magicals. They really are very versatile. You can use them in so many different ways um, in many different um, applications. And they go a long way because there is it's such a fine pigment that you don't need much to go a long way. So I, if you have the Lindy's, I want you to get them out, play with them, have fun. When all my samples are dry, I'm going to take pictures. I'm going to finish off a few of them. I'm going to make cards. Uh, some of these might end up in my art journal. So watch for those. I'll post photos when those are finished. But I hope you learned something. And if you've got some of the Lindy's Magicals, or even if you've got the Color Sparks, um, get those out because you can use all of these same techniques with that product too. So thank you so much for joining me. I will be back next week for another Monday Night Live. And that one should be a Monday Night Live surprise because we're already going to be into March next Monday. So it's probably going to be Monday Night Surprise. I don't know who's going to surprise me, but it should be a good one. Have a great evening, everyone. If you're looking for the rest of my videos, this was episode five of Monday Night Live. You can find the rest on our YouTube channel. Have a great evening. Bye.